problems. Good morning, welcome to Santiago de Compostela Parish. We welcome the people joining us via live stream. Please stand. Let's take this opportunity to greet the people around us, welcoming them here to our parish this morning. Let us begin our celebration singing number 528, Christ in me arise, number 528. in me for out your blessing and healing cries in me arise and I shall rise with you good morning brothers and sisters we are celebrating today Wednesday of the seventh week in ordinary time so it's Tuesday of the 27th peak in ordinary time. Let us begin the celebration with the sign of God's love in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, in silence, let us look back at our sins and with humility ask forgiveness so that we may prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You healed the sick. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. You forgave sinners, Christ eleison, Christ eleison. You gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. Then he had this proclaimed throughout Nineveh by decree of the king and his nobles. Neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep, shall taste anything. They shall not eat, nor shall they drink. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he has in hand. Who knows? God may relent and forgive and withhold his blazing wrath so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. If you, O Lord, mark my iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark my iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Let Israel wait for the Lord, for with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. Alleluia. And with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary, who sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? <clears throat> Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. 
there is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Once again, good morning, brothers and sisters. Earlier, it, I thought it's already Wednesday, <laughs> but it's still Tuesday. Do you complain a lot while doing your work or your chores at home? Who among you complains a lot? What is it that our Lord said? Why is it that our Lord said that Mary has chosen the better part? We debate on which is better. It is, is it prayer or action? The truth is that both are important. Prayer without action, according to the Apostle James, is nothing likewise. Work without prayer is activism, socialism, or pragmatism. In our gospel today, Martha, the diligent and caring hostess, welcomed Jesus into her home with open arms. She was consumed by her desire to serve Him, preparing the meal, setting the table, and ensuring everything was perfect. Her actions were born out of love and devotion to our Lord Jesus Christ because they are friends. Yet, her heart was heavy with anxiety. As she toiled in the kitchen, her sister Mary chose to sit at Jesus' feet, soaking in his teachings and his presence. Martha's good intentions became overshadowed by her anxiety. She felt burdened by the weight of her responsibilities and complained to Jesus, saying that she alone was shouldering the kitchen chores. In response, Jesus gently rebuked her, not for her desire to serve, but for allowing her anxiety to, to consume her. That's why I asked earlier, are you complaining a lot when you're doing your chores or you're doing your work? I know you're doing your work and you're doing your chores because you love doing it, you love your family, but sometimes we are overburdened by our anxiety. You love doing it, but sometimes you are anxious doing it. And Jesus reminds us of the vital lesson taught us by St. Therese of St. Plessis, who proclaimed that a small act done in pure love is better than all the services one can perform in the church. Martha's actions were undoubtedly good, but the issue at hand was the purity of her charity. Yes, it is good that you are working, preparing, doing your chores, but you have to remember that you have to do it in pure charity. Charity, my dear friends, is not merely about the deeds we do or the tasks we undertake. It is about the condition of our hearts while we do them. It is about the love that motivates and sustains our actions. Mary, on the other hand, understood this well. She chose the better part by sitting at the Lord's feet, not because she was idle or indifferent to the needs of hospitality, but because she recognized that the first and most important act of charity is to be present with Jesus, to listen to His words, and to be transformed by His love. So, my dear brothers and sisters, as we go about our daily lives, serving in various capacities, let us not allow anxiety and distraction cloud our acts of charity. Instead, let us be like Mary, choosing the better part, staying with Jesus while doing our works, while doing our chores, by cultivating a pure and selfless love for the Lord in all that we do. That everything we do is for the glorification of our Lord. And out of pure charity and out of pure love, the condition of our heart. 
not that because you are overburdened, not because that you are doing a lot of things. It is all you, all you, all you. But the thing is, remember what our Saint Therese said, little acts done with pure love. May Mary and Martha's story remind us of that charity, rooted in pure love. And because this is the path to true discipleship and communion with Christ. May we always choose always the better part with our Lord. The active love of good Samaritan is balanced by the contemplative love of Mary, who sat beside Jesus to listen to him speak. May our life be a combination of contemplation and action. Our response, Lord, help us to choose the better part. Lord, help us to choose the better part. May the people of God appreciate the contemplative life of consecrated women who help the church and all humankind to experience a spousal relationship with God by consecrating themselves to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to choose the better part. May those who immerse themselves in work not ignore the better part, which is to sit at the feet of Jesus and take their rest while listening to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to choose the better part. May prayer and listening to the word of God be a part of our, day, of our day so as to draw inspiration and strength for our many concerns. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to choose the better part. May we, like Martha, welcome Jesus in person of those who come to seek, seeking company or help in their need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to choose the better part. May we find among us friends of Jesus like Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, whom we can feel at home and enjoy conversation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to choose the better part. We especially pray for the intentions of uh, Jaden Hyun, Soledad Garnica, and Dinah Mercado, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, help, help us, us to choose, choose the, the better, better part. part. We, especially, we also pray for the intention submitted to us, especially for the intention of Christian and Belinda Ma Mata, Lena Landrito Danao, Bing Makitar, Ronnie Alonte, Cecil Santos Maxino, Father Randy Sampinto, Dave Atkins, Anna Marie Garone, for the quick healing and complete recovery of Kimberly Pham Hewitt, Nancy Scott, Judy Morgan, Rose Quimlat, Lumi Palacio, Lorenzo Moran, Barbara Yankar, Victoria Pineda, Berlin Santa Ana, Linda Lagmay, Lucin Macaluas, Joan Donahue, John Albertin, and Jesse Reyna, and for the eternal repose of the souls of Pat and Rogelio Guerial, Florinda de los Santos, Angel Sarosa, John Donahue, Maria del Rosario Castro, Vicente Martinez, and Katie Quintara. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord help, help us, us to choose the better part. In the silence of our heart, let us lift up to the Lord all our personal petitions and intentions. We also pray for all those people whom we promised to pray for. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord help, us help us to choose, choose the, the better, better part. part. Almighty God, Jesus enjoined the company of his disciples and his intimate friends. We thank you for our friends and neighbors who are living in our midst reflect your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness, we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. For the divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with bountiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks to the Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is, is itself our gift, your gift. Since our praises are nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Tonius, Sabao. You are indeed holy, O Lord, a fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. He proclaimed your death, O Lord, and professed the resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, a bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Thomas's brother, bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. I live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace with you. Agnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tones peccata muni, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion antiphone, the Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the soul that seeks him. Body of Christ. The blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now ask the intercession and the maternal protection of our mother. So to her we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Prayer to St. Joseph, heal God. Space. To you, God entrusted his only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ has been secure and safe. Blessed Joseph, to us too. Show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do the prince of the heavenly host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Let us sing number 534, the prayer of St. Francis, number 534. Make me a channel of your peace Where there's despair in life, let me bring you hope Where there is darkness, only thy And where there's sadness, ever joy O oh, Master, grant that I may never see too much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love it all my soul. 